Thank you for joining the Clarity and Purpose Show, where cause-driven business leaders share what you need to know to align your purpose and your team. They'll drop wisdom and knowledge about why they lead, what challenges they face, and how they remove the barriers that keep them from growing. Our guest today has started a number of businesses in his career, but has now started a nonprofit to help other people start businesses later in life. Most people retire and they still want to start something new. He helps fill that gap. He's written a book called Ageless Startup and now has a nonprofit helping people start businesses in the second half of their life and find success. Please help me welcome Rick Tarian. Rick, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Hi, James. Thanks for the invitation. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, we're going to jump right in. We've already introduced you. People love to hear these questions that we've discovered, and it starts with why. Rick, why do you do what you do? What is your big why? So I hate problems that are ignored. I just it just it just bugs me, and I know the kind of friction it puts into systems uh, by ignoring those problems. I've got a visceral hate for that. And uh, it just drives me. And uh, I've I picked that up, and, uh, and I'm watching this system of late life em- employment and, and job opportunities. And I'm, I'm going to go after that one in a big way. Awesome. So, how is that practically? Do you do that in business? How am I going to do it? I'm going to do it by starting a nonprofit. Uh, I have started a nonprofit. It's based on uh, the book that I wrote. The book is called Ageless Startup, Start a Business at Any Age. But the important part is what you do with these books. So I've started a nonprofit. I intentionally wanted to do that because there's a lot of schemes out there for keeping people employed. This is going to be a nonprofit peer-to-peer model behind it. And I hope to for it to become a global platform for doing business development among people in the second half of life. Awesome. And what have you seen in your experiences now that make you want to actually attack that problem? So I can tell a little story. Uh, I Before I uh, came to Pittsburgh and started this, I uh, helped start this current startup I'm working on, I used to contract with a lot of large trade associations, specifically in the food industry. And these were some of the largest companies in the world, and most many of them as among the most innovative as well. And I used to watch at their annual conventions as people would gather from different companies out in the hallways between sessions saying goodbye to each other. And they'd hit 63, 64, 65, hit a mandatory retirement age. Now, for some people, that's perfectly fine. But most of what I was seeing, these people knew their industry. They knew the problems. They knew the challenges. They knew where the networks were. They had the know-how of decades of experience and how to bring on new people into these corporations. And they're walking out the damn door. I mean, this is just dumb. Now, some people want to walk out the door, and that's fine. Um, I did some research for the book, and it said there's about 100 million people between 45 and 65 uh, in the U.S., 25% of them pre-pandemic said they wanted to start their own enterprise. And it's 25 million people. That's 10 years of job growth in a normal economy. And since the pandemic, it's just straight up. So uh, there's a lot of friction in that system. There's a lot of broken pieces. There's a lot of assumptions um, that just drive me nuts. Wow. So, so then what are some things that get in the way of you trying to accomplish this, right? Obviously, there's a mass number of people that want to do it. But what gets in the way of you accomplishing this? Um, so right now I'm in a slow launch to get this nonprofit up and running. I would like it to go a little faster, but, right? <laughs> um, I, yeah, but I, I've got a tremendous uh, startup that uh, is just coming out of its launch phase in Pittsburgh. It's called food21.org. Uh, and I really, really love that organization. I love what we've been able to do. And, um, it's hard to leave something or start to move away from something you love, um, but I got a new suitor off to the side with this Center for Ageless Entrepreneurs, and I'm really anxious. I think it's a major contribution that I can make. Uh, having to parse out my time slowly as available um, is, is probably the most frustrating about it. So 
This is our third question we usually get into is like, how do you get in the way? And what I love to hear, even with your experience, because you're not helping and wanting to help people that are older and want to, you know, some of them feel like this is it. They're, they're done and it's over. They don't really have a chance. It's too late. Um, but you're like, no, in any age, we can get this going, get something successful started. Um, and I know I've seen many stories like that myself, but what are ways that you've seen yourself block that from happening in your own experience? Well, we all carry around assumptions. You know, I think I'm uh, a clean slate, but I'm not. None of us are. Uh, we're born with biases and we learn them through our lives. Um, and they, they, they come in every flavor and every size. And batting those aside to get to clear ground, to get to a blue ocean is, uh, is hard work. Uh, it's it's hard to create a clean slate for yourself, but you need that to uh, bring opportunities to other people. You need to say it clearly. You're not going to tell somebody what to do. You're going to show them what the opportunity is. And um, and doing that with as uh, unbiased, uh, unself-interested approach, I, I think is the most su uh, successful way to go about that. Um, that's why I did turn this thing, the new organization, into a nonprofit. I really do want to take that component off the table so there's not that little bit of, uh, you know, curiosity, eyebrow raising over who's getting what out of this deal. No, that's good. So let's say I'm in my 60s and I come to you, Rick. I'm like, okay, I've seen your things. I'm interested. Um, not sure how to really get started. I've got some experience, though. I've worked in a company for 30 years. Um, where, where should I start? What should I do? So there's three things I want you to consider as you take that path, as you begin to take that path. Uh, and some of them are a little contrary. I want you to start small. There is no reason to go out and raise money and, you know, there's room for that stuff. There's None of that is bad, but there's a whole part of capitalism and markets that uh, people don't are, are not celebrated. Uh, so starting out as a one-person LLC, arm yourself, get yourself hardened up, get in the game. So you want to start small and you want to start smart. In my world, starting smart means getting a peer group around yourself, uh, allies, teammates, when an opportunity arises, you can create a pickup basketball team. Uh, you can go and you say, oh, I need a chief technical officer. I need a landscape specialist. I need a fire safety suppression specialist. Well, if you're in a group and you have networking with these people on a peer-to-peer -peer basis and have built a little bit of trust, know the system, you're using common language, then when that opportunity comes in, you say, well, yeah, I have a team for that. And off that team goes. Uh, so you start Small, you start smart, and the most important of all is start right now. You know, the old adage is, when's the best time to plant a tree? And if the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next time, best time is today. Uh, this is going to take longer than you think. Everything does. Just the little nitty, nitpicky things, the banking and the credit and the insurance and all of that. There is no harm in getting started early because it is going to uh, take you longer than you think. And I'm the perfect poster boy for that with my new nonprofit. That's awesome. Um, so would you suggest that people are starting based off of their experiences, right? So if I worked 30 years in a business doing a specific trade, is that where I should start? Or is that based off of other maybe purposes that I might have? So it's, it's a, a perfectly valid place to start and a good place to start. You've, all, you've got know-how and knowledge and skills and networks into that trade. Uh, that's a perfectly good place to start. I tell people to look for communities that they love and markets that they love. Um, you, you, know, you don't have to be fully passionate and hopscotching around the clouds, you know. Uh, but you need to love what you do and you need to really respect what you do. So as you suggest, looking at markets that you know and also looking at communities that you love. Uh, we all want to do that. And when you can combine those two, then it's really gold. Yeah, no, that's great. And I love, I love how your focus, even in your three points, have people gather around you, building community. Um, I'm sure you've learned this the hard way too yourself, but um, I know myself, I, I wouldn't be where I was today if it wasn't specific people in my life that I've gathered around me, um, even at my young age. Um, so I appreciate you bringing that into this because community is such a big piece. Um, 
and bringing helps bring clarity, helps define where you are and what you're doing. Um, you get better solutions in a group without any doubt. And, um, and, and I, my generation was taught, you know, entrepreneurship is a lone ranger game. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to come in guns blazing and solve everybody's problems. It just doesn't work like that now. Nobody even wants that person on their property. Uh, we want teams and, and all the way up to investment grade new companies, uh, down to individual consultancies. You want teams and you want competency in those teams. Um, and I think this building of a center for ageless entrepreneurs is one way to build a competency platform so people can get in, practice their pitches, meet one another, get that uh, trust level up and uh, ready to take on the outside world. That's awesome. Okay, so tell me a little more then um, how someone can get involved with that. So what, what's what's your goal? Uh, I know it's something that's getting, getting started, but let's say I'm in another state or another area. Well, how does that work? Sure. So the platform is intended to be eventually global. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's 3 billion people moving into the second half of life right now while we're talking. Um, we're going to have to keep those people in the game as many as want to stay in the game. And um, there's certainly plenty enough problems for them. Um, so my goal is to get this uh, community platform up and running. Uh, there's a lot of membership type platforms that are developing right now. I think I want to keep this very focused on this particular topic of entrepreneurship in the second half of life. Um, probably have to state an English language initially and in that that's the mother language of everybody that I'm dealing with around here. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can't have uh, foreign language chapters develop. I just did a great podcast with a young man in Oman. Uh, I did another one in Singapore. I think that there's, I think, I see this as a, 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 a global platform. Um, if it's unbiased and it is um, true to itself and not trying to just serve the people that are running it, if it's truly meant to serve the people that are uh, looking for that help, I don't see any reason there can't be a few million people involved in this in a relatively modest amount of time. That's awesome. And I hope it does. Um, Thank you. So good question that we usually probably put at the end is what's something for you, Rick, that you need to stop or uh, quit doing to, to grow? What's something you need to probably stop to keep growing? I probably need to stop working so many jobs. <laughs> um, Too many things going on. <laughs> I, well, right. And my co-founder in the uh, nonprofit is a PhD, runs a business accelerator and uh, at a university, uh, Dr. John Golden. Um, and what he's uh, uh, describing to me is, and he, John is specifically working on, is a concept at the end of paid employment where instead of them giving you a watch and waving goodbye, you have something called phased retirement where you can start to cut down your hours and start to build out a new enterprise, probably still connected to the mothership here. Um, I, I need to go through that myself uh, and start to pull over here. I need to give more time to this new, uh, this new center, but that's really easy for me to say. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> it's, it's a little harder to do. Focus is a hard thing, especially when you enjoy so many different things, which is not bad. Just, right. yeah. Well, this opportunity is a, a one I've been working on for many, many years, and I, I, it's all coming together, and I, I'm confident it's going to hit on all strides when the time's awesome. right. Was well, there anything else you'd like to share about that or anything on your heart? No, I think uh, I've really enjoyed the conversation. I, uh, I look forward to staying in touch and listening to your great podcast, and uh, I'm grateful for the invitation, That's James. That's great, Rick, and I appreciate that. We'll... Uh, We'll put all of your information below. So if y'all are listening or watching, all the ways you need to try to connect with Rick, um, if you're interested in this new venture, this new, maybe you're in that stage of life and you're sitting there thinking, okay, there's someone that might be able to help me figure out what those next steps. Rick's your guy. So we're gonna put that, those links below. Um, Rick, we, cl we close out every show with dancing. So are you ready? This is your idea. James. <laughs> Here we go, Rick. <laughs> Here we go. There it is. That's a great ray. <laughs> it's time.
time for the segment Maximizer. We sent our guest a list of growth items to pick from. Let's see what our guest picked this week to maximize on the show. All right, Rick, you chose the grunt test like most people do. And it's asking yourself three questions when you look at your website. And it's, what is it you actually do? How can you help me? And what action do you want me to take to do some sort of business with you? And we're looking at your book website. We'll just make that known. This is about selling your book. And when we come to the site, people usually give you about five seconds to answer those questions, which is kind of unfortunate, but reality. And people do like a Z pattern or an E pattern when they read, just like reading left to right. And you start at the top left, age of startup, that's fine. It, it is stating um, what the business is or what the platform is. And then we start going to the right, home, order, reviews, blog, contact. There's a lot of things on here that I'm not sure what you want me to actually do. Now, a lot of people have these things on there, which is fine. Um, the search piece right here is usually used for cataloging maybe products. Uh, so I would say this might even be a distraction right now for what you're trying to do. Um, all of these things you have on here are fine. I would actually recommend moving them um, either to a little hamburger menu or the bottom of your web page and making this very clear and open when you land to start answering those three questions. So then they're not confused on what to look at or what to do and to say, what do you do? Well, this is a book. So how can you help me? So what if we put something like success in business can start at any age? And it kind of draws me in to answer that question. Success in business can start at any age. Now, that's just a quick thing I came up with. Uh, maybe put the book that you have down here up top so that I know exactly what I'm, what I'm getting. Um, again, some people don't even give you a scroll, which is unfortunate because you want to add value to them before they'll do that. So what if we said success in business can start at any age and then put your field guide from employee to entrepreneur or empty nester to business owner. It's something you had a little further down that I read in one of your descriptions and then put the book up there. And then it's like, great, you've answered what it, it is you do. It's a book and this is what it can help me do. And what do you actually want me to take? Well, you want me to buy it, right? So what if we just put on the very top right up here, a big button that says buy book. And that's all that was there. So we saw title, buy book, a big, maybe it's a philosophical statement. I kind of made my own there. And then what it is it, that you actually get and the picture. And that's all they saw. It's like, great, that's what you want me to do. Now, moving down the page, we could actually add more value. You've got a, a lot of great content here. I think we just need to break it up. Um, make it, give it, give it some, I like to say, give it some space. Uh, people don't really like to read, honestly, even though when they get their book, they'll read it. They don't like to read websites. They just want to see value. So maybe we could pull some of these things you have here that are great. Minimize your risk and maximize your value. Uh, set up a place that's right for you and our pace, sorry, pace that's right for you and your business. Maybe we can make two or three of those as value props across the page that are super simple. And that's all that it says. Um, then put some reviews. I know you've got a review up top. Put a couple reviews on here. Um, I would actually put any information about you at the bottom because if they really know that this book's going to solve their problem, they'll want to know who you are later. So we tell people to put that towards the bottom. And then I see you have join a newsletter. We want to get their email, right? Because if we have their email, then we can send more information. But most people don't join newsletters anymore, unfortunately. They don't see the value in a newsletter because then they're just going to put on a list. Well, what if we could add value to get them on that list by giving them your first chapter of the book for free? Maybe we give them a section of the book for free, and that's where how we get their email. Say, hey, download this first chapter, put your name and email, and they immediately get a read. Um, and then at the end of that little section they get, have them ask them to buy a book again. But I think the only button I would love to see on the site is buy book all the way down. Just put a buy book button all the way down. Um, and then when you get down here, you can have blog and um, of course, I think you would add the reviews on here, contact, stuff like that. Because what happens is if they go here and they click reviews first, you're taking them away from what we call your sales letter. They're taking them away from something that, that's going to actually draw them in to make that purchase. If they go to your blog, now they're going to go to something that's going to throw them off um, from actually doing what you want them to do. And that's to buy the book. So that's just one way to look at you doing your website just for your book. 
Very good. I've been keeping really good notes, and uh, you've, you've given me my homework, James. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, Rick. Thank you very much. What up, Jake? What is up, James? Hey, man, you, you've you got a couple kids that are in their preteen, teenager years. I know I've got young ones that are six and four right now, but how important is communication? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the older they get, the more challenging it gets. Um, yeah, it's important. So what are things you have to do when you're stepping into something new or having to kind of look at what you're communicating with them? Well, it's always changing. Uh, and so I feel like I'm constantly reevaluating yeah. how I communicate with my teenagers because the same thing doesn't work every day. So I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, funny you say that because... That's exactly what we have to do every time we're communicating, not just who we are, but what we're trying to launch. Maybe it's a campaign or, um, but it really starts the foundation of what you do in business and the message you share is so important. I think we, you know, speaking to the kids or even my spouse, like communication is key to the relationship. And sometimes in business, we don't spend a lot of efforts and time and money on the communication piece. So we've put together a 20 minute messaging makeover that you can go through and take you through five simple steps to help you reevaluate where your messaging is at and make sure it's speaking to the type of people you are trying to reach and they can connect with who you are. So go make your communication important, download the 20 messaging, 20 minute messaging makeover and take over your messaging. Go get it. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you for joining the Clarity and Purpose show. Wherever you are watching or listening, make sure you subscribe to the channel or podcast so you don't miss more growth frameworks from cause-driven leaders. We believe when a business leader aligns their team with their message, they become unstoppable.